All right, so today's gonna to be a little different. I wanna talk about some workflow stuff, uh, and I wanna, I'm gonna talk about templates. I'm gonna use some turning stuff, uh, but I think this applies to everything, and it probably actually applies better to milling. Um, and there's a good chance if you're watching uh, my channel or if you found my channel that you're familiar with the concept of templates. Um, all of the Autodesk CAM stuff has it, and every single uh, CAM software I've ever used has something very similar um, to what HSM Works calls templates. Uh, let's just say I've machined a part that's similar to this stupid part that we've got going on here. And um, at that time I thought, or I had the forethought to think these operations worked pretty good and they're pretty generic and there's a good chance that I'll machine something similar in the future. And that's a great thought. And so I took the operations that I used for that. I stored them as a template. So now I can come in here and grab my stupid template that I made before. And with a pretty quick click of a button, I get some operations and I'm pretty close to having something that I'm happy with on machining this part. And that's fine, and those are super useful, uh, but I actually don't use those that often, and that's what I wanna talk about, is the why on that. Um, I think these are really useful, and I do use them in places where I have an operation that has a whole lot of configuration done to it, and that I think that that will be useful for a certain cut type strategy in the future, but I don't really use them this way. And the reason is that I think that there's two things you can do that are ultimately easier. Um, the first one is what I wanna talk about today. So let's take a look. Let's get rid of this stuff. And let's jump into what I call a template. Um, here we go. So this is what I call a template and it's basically leveraging the CAD portion, which if you're using uh, Autodesk CAM, you know, HSM works, Autodesk, or Inventor HSM or or Fusion Cam. Um, the one thing all of those have in common is that they're directly attached to a really serious CAD platform. And I think the same is true for uh, even some of the competitors, NX, uh, all of those. You're, you're, you're really taking maybe what's slightly less powerful CAM than what exists elsewhere, but the, the ability to leverage the CAD side is really where the power comes from here. So let's take a look at this. Uh, what we have is a HSM works or a, excuse me, a SolidWorks assembly uh, with a sort of generic stupid part loaded in here. And it has some fixturing. It has this fixture and there's another fixture that's sort of loaded in here and it's hidden right now. Um, it, that's sort of defining the pickoff point for the sub spindle and where the part will, you know, it's made it in here where the part will wind up on the second operation. Um, uh, we have a piece of stock that's in here that's um, defined parametrically. It's being driven based on some distance off of here, uh, off of the face, and then it's being extruded up to a point on our part or an offset from our part. And um, that's about it on the CAD side here. Um, then we're using, or I'm using configurations to drive visibility on these two things. Um, you can imagine if you have a part with a whole bunch of operations and a whole bunch of different fixturings, um, it can be kind of tedious to go through here and hide and show individual operations and all of the different things that are in reference to that. This makes it really handy just to swap between and see, hey, this is, the, this is how the part lives in the, that operation. This is how it lives in the second operation. I can quickly toggle between and see them. Um, and then on the cam side, no, I'm correctly saying that, uh, we have literally those same operations. I just saved them a few minutes ago, but we have two, uh, two jobs. Um, and this one's actually be, being driven by this one. It has the, um, continue machining from previous operations. So, uh, stock from these operations transfers down. Um, you can generate these. They'll all hopefully generate nicely and cleanly. Um, we have both operations and this is a, on this part, I could post this code. It, uh, some of the other benefits are that I have the post processor stored with a machine configuration that's within these jobs. Um, when I go to post process it, it will automatically come out um, with the proper post processor, regardless of what the last one I used was. Um, if a machine simul, if I was using milling uh, or for the, if there were milling operations in here and I had a machine truthfully defined, in this case it's a turning center and that's not supported by HSM works yet. Um, but on the milling side, that's stored with it and it knows exactly where that assembly lives and, and where these parts go in that assembly. So with that, this file has a whole lot of information in it. And 
what's neat here is that this isn't the part we want to machine. This is, like I said, it's just a dummy part. But let's take a look at the part we do want to machine. Uh, that one. What we're going to do is we're just going to replace this part with this one and we'll get to carry over all of this other information. We're going to use a replace. We're going to replace our stupid part with our real part. It's going to come in here and it's missing a couple of references, but SolidWorks has a great user interface to show me. Uh, I'm missing this, give me a new reference for it. Okay. I'm missing this reference to the back, give me a new reference for it. Okay. Click all right. I think there'll be, yep, another one missing from the extrusion. We'll just pop in, edit that feature. It's missing the surface that was used to define the end of the feature. Redefine that. We've got our nice offset back. Click OK. Click Edit. And um, I had to do a quick refresh there because it wasn't picking up the uh, the correction. Um, come back over to the cam side. Hit the Rebuild button to make sure it attaches everything. We'll generate. We'll generate. And like that, we have operations already set up for this brand new part. And second operation already going on. And that's pretty much, you know, it's, it's not ready to run. And that the I think the distinction here is that you're with any templating, you're still not really looking to get a part that's ready to run right off the bat. But the part that I like about this is all of that information, all of the where the chuck is at, um, having these operations set up, we can carry over not just these operations, those are easy, those exist in this assembly, but we can also carry over how many jobs there are, um, the association of the job to the piece of stock, the job to the model. Um, I don't think in this case I have fixturing defined, but in uh, on a milling job you'd typically have the fixturing defined, you'd have the machine defined, um, you know, all, all of that stuff. Um, all of the things that you tend to re forget, like that this second op job needs to use the second work offset and be defined as a secondary spindle. Um, that in your parting operation you need uh, to transfer the stock and all of that stuff. And, and that this is all sort of proven out already because it exists within a reliable assembly. Um, now, from that, what's even, to me, cooler is that once you do go through and you build an even more fleshed out version of this because you go in and you machine this exact part, um, the beauty of HSM works is often that if I am evolving this part, that will continue to associate with the geometry and I can update this CAD um, at will. But in a lot of instances, you might be working with a piece of CAD that's coming from external. Like in this case, this part was actually designed in Fusion. So SolidWorks doesn't really have any uh, great reference to it. And in a lot of cases, what winds up happening is that your initial template is slightly too basic and you don't really define everything. But what's great is that as you move along with this, your part the, the parts that you program, each one of those carries over all of the same data. You can pretty easily just go in and work in reverse, replace this part with your original dummy part, and save the new version back as your template. Or even just wind up where all of the parts that you're carrying forward that were created off of this template, you can just choose, pick and choose the closest part that you've used that template for as your most recent template or the template that best fits this. Um, I hope that gives a different uh, different perspective on how or on some interesting ways you can leverage um, the CAD environment to make it do what you want. Um, I thought real quick I'd take a look and, and show. I'm not a super powerful um, Fusion user, but I kind of did the same thing in here. I've got a, a Lang vise that's built up. It has a piece of stock in it. Um, I think I even have a couple of operations in here. Yeah, it looks like I do. Um, just to sort of show that, yeah, this, this works here too. Um, I can come in here, I can edit this profile sketch and say the part I'm going to machine is only going to be an inch. Oops. 1.5 in. Inches wide. Uh, stop the sketch. It'll automatically, or I should say parametrically, parametrically update. Um, in this case, I haven't quite looked into the workflow enough to, to have that fancy replace going on, but regardless of that, you can pretty quickly over here, insert this part into our design. 
it comes in here. Um, maybe you'd want to use mates. Um, maybe you just want to drag and drop this thing in here, orient it the way you want it. Uh, that came in pretty clean. Click OK. Let's jump into cam. In this case, we'll probably need to define that, oops, that that's what we want to machine. And let's hit generate. And there you go, we, we're still getting some operations. Clearly got an error going on there. Nice contour, nice top, roughing, rest roughing. So I'm sure that the same logic and the same workflows can be applied in both Fusion and in Inventor. Um, I'd love to hear from other people who maybe start using this workflow. Um, you know, in this case, I'm probably driving this off of some point. I did, I did notice that there's no coordinate systems, or I, I don't think coordinate systems exist in in Fusion yet, so that's a little bit of a of a drawback. But um, yeah, there you go. 